This is Audrey, who says, My husband and I are in our 80s and have been tithing for many years. We both love the Lord and give willingly, and our tithe is over 10%. I praise Him and thank Him for our blessings. I declare that this is our time of prosperity, but we never have an extra money after our monthly bills are paid. Our old car just broke down and we had to borrow money to fix it. We both need dental work, but we can't afford it. I constantly have to use our credit card to pay for medical needs. I speak the verse about, quote, give and it will be given to you. We have no unforgiveness in our lives. What could we be doing wrong? Well, why don't you ask God to show you some ways of making money? And um, you're, you, you're, you're looking at the downside of all the bills you've got. <laughs> It's a battle with a demon. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Get out there on Christian Mingle Creative for a profile and start trolling. No, I hope nobody has your back on this one. You sick bastard. We're practically in VR. And welcome to Atheist Airwaves, your no-filter look at current news and issues facing atheists and things playing over my voice. I knew that was going to happen. Let's try that one more time. Welcome to Atheist Airwaves, your no-filter look at current news and issues facing atheists and the atheist community. I'm Jay Guerrero. I'm Petey Alfaro. I'm Christian Ferris. And I'm Susan Durbin. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for Atheist Airwaves. We record live every Tuesday at 7.30 Central, so come out, participate in the show, and be in our chat room. B. B. Just exist. <laughs> Our intro audio this week is Pat Robertson explaining God to a woman who gives all of her money to the church and can't understand why she doesn't have any money. Oh, well, she doesn't give it all to the church. Just over oh, 10%. Over 10. Over 10. Over She's 10. like going above and beyond. So I'm going to guess she probably didn't have a very good job throughout her life because, of course, she's going to church and tithing the entire time. You know, she oh. couldn't you know, spend a whole lot of money on, you know, like business clothes to... I, I would say that she know. doesn't. She didn't have a very good job throughout her life because she has no retirement, unless she gave it to the right. church. Well, that's what I was saying. Is that she? She doesn't have a very good job. She's probably not pulling pension. She's probably just on social uh, social security or whatever. She the hell couldn't it is. max out get. her four hundred one k because she was giving it to the church. Okay, that too. <laughs> you know. So yeah, she doesn't have a whole lot coming in. No. How much is social security for old people? Insufficient. I don't know. I'm not old. <laughs> Insufficient. Yeah. Okay. So she's still. Near enough. So I mean, she's it, still it, giving ten percent of that it, to the church also, or more. Also, than. social security is different for everybody, depending on, um, you know, how what much color you are. And yes, what color you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, Jay. I'm never going to get old, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll be dead by the time I'm like, I don't know, thirty-five probably. I gave you fifty-four. I don't know, Christian. Christian can get kind of violent. The, the really... Um, <laughs> Everybody's just going to ignore that. <laughs> Moving on. The, the really confusing part about this story is how she's giving over 10% of her money to the church. And then she declared that this is going to be her time of prosperity. But it's not working. Nope. I'm Cost. confused. I don't get it. Well, that's how, that's how they make their entire income is by promising people, you give us money now, you're going to get it back later. And they, sometimes they don't specify later. So she's probably under the mistaken idea that oh it's probably gonna be when i'm old but well is she so brainwashed she's been hearing it her whole life probably doing it year mm -hmm. after year after year it's like okay this is what's gonna happen and this is what's gonna happen mm -hmm. so she's just repeating the verse well, like, over and, and over again. and here's the worst part is that when it's not working who does she ask she asked the guy she's giving her money to. Yep. It's like, why isn't this working? He's not going to tell you because you're giving me all your money. Maybe you should cut it back to 5%. Right. <laughs> right. Maybe. Pat Robertson's not going to do that. <laughs> what Pat Robertson is going to say is sell all your junk and go be a greeter at Walmart and send me more. Yeah, pretty much. So fun fact. Um, apparently Jesus didn't actually command Christians in the New Testament, did not command them to tithe. He said, give, give what you can and give like happily. Um, and that's oh, she's giving do you happily. Have the, do you have that verse? Second uh, Corinthians nine seven, uh, give cheerfully, but only what you can give. Something along those lines. But they're not obligated to. The only ones who are obligated to were the teachers and the Pharisees and those who followed Mosaic law. And can that's from Matthew twenty three twenty three. So can I happily give them what I have, like old underwear? Maybe. <laughs> can I tie the old <laughs> underwear and stuff? Yay! Put it, <laughs> put it in the collection basket and see what they do. <laughs> I might go to church just do this. Can I take my underwear off in church and put it in the collection basket you and can put my pants it, back on? If you can do it sneakily enough, dude, I'm all for I don't want to be sneaky. I want to be a dick. God loves wow. a cheerful giver. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an oral sex reference. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> oh, all right, wow. let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Give me just a second. 
Oh, Jesus Christ, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's me, Jesus Christ, Jay. Oh, also, Atheist Airwaves has 50% less Jesus this week. We're making okay. some improvements. What? We're improving the show. There's 50% less Jesus. Oh, okay, week. cool. I like it. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. It's oh, also, by the way. I'm sorry. It's also whiter than white. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, uh, throughout the show today, we're going to go ahead and open up the call-in line. That's Atheist Airwaves, all one word, through Skype. Uh, any point in the show, if you have something you'd like to discuss or talk about, just give us a shout. Okay, so last week we, t- we covered a story out of Florida where an atheist named Joseph Richardson was booted from a city commissioner's meeting because he didn't want to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation, the Christian prayer invocation. Um, the, uh, the story broke and the commissioners have decided to do something a little different. They had three things on the table, one of which was uh, to completely remove the invocations. Which would have been a good Would have been thing. perfect. Yeah. Um, they could have had a moment of silence instead of the invocations, or they could have done what I think is the best thing and included everyone in the invocations. Unfortunately, uh, they decided that they're going to have a moment of silence, and it's okay if you sit down during the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I think that's okay. <clears throat> I, I'm okay with moments of silence because I can sure. use... Moments of silence, especially if I have to listen to these dickheads talk for another hour or two. I could use a little bit of centering time. Woosa. You know? <laughs> it, it, it was overthrown three to two, so there was still a couple people on the fence. Not exactly sure which way they were on the fence, but... Well, it's good to know uh, that 60% of them realize what the Constitution says. And that true. they can't force the religion. But it, I think it's a win. I, I was... Yeah. Super it's the most surprised. neutral thing yeah, to do. It, so I was like, super okay. surprised. I, I didn't expect anything more of it. I expected yeah. it to just get swept under the rug. Well, I expected lawsuits and whatnot. Uh, I expected this guy to be removed from a lot more city council meetings, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it was close. It was three to two. But I, I wish more places would just do this and just be inclusive of everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know why that's such a... I don't understand why that's such a hard thing to do. I... I I don't mind because Christian people in my crap, and I, as long as most I, people think what I think is right, and exactly, that's, that's exactly what I was about to it's say. It's the majority, or well, at least the ones that are outspoken about. Cri- it. Christians do that mm-hmm. all, all the time, including the one sitting here at this table. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some other pledge news. <clears throat> uh, earlier this year, an organization called Lifeway Research conducted a poll that found that only eight percent of Americans felt that under God should be removed from the Pledge of Allegiance which I thought was predictable and accurate. And even if it's crappy, that's just America, right? Yeah, you one would think. Yeah. But the American Humanist Association had a hypoth- hypothesis. Um, and they thought that if Americans knew the history of the pledge, that those numbers would change. That if they knew that the pledge was added in the 50s, that that might change their opinions on it. I would have bet against them on that. As would I. Okay. Well, yeah. No? No? Okay. No, I don't think so. Because once you start to realize, because at the same time, a lot of people have the whole United States pride that that's why they, they stand up and, you know, put their hand on their heart and face the flag, take off their hats, the whole works, that it's because more about the United States, not under God. They just assume, oh, it's all just boiled into one thing, not realizing he's not here, he's not real, it wasn't written anywhere. I think it boils down to delivery. One person can explain one thing this way, and another person can explain it a different way and be way more convincing. That could be. That could be. But I don't it's know. It's a fact, though, so it's, they can't really argue with it. It's I, well, no, they can't argue with it, but there, there's ways of making people's uh, temporary judgment sway. Yeah. Um, framing. I mean, yeah, that's framing, exactly what it is. Framing is very, very important when you're talking to anyone about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> It's really weird. The pledge is very strange because, I mean, it is indoctrination. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, it's no surprise to me that people who were indoctrinated with the new version feel very strongly about it. Um, I don't even think most people, especially when you start saying it as a kid, I don't think my kids understand what it means. I know I didn't. Yeah, I didn't once, either. Once I started realizing what it was, I stopped saying it. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me let me talk a little bit more about what the American... No, so I don't want to get too far ahead because I want to talk about that in a second. Um so the American Humanist Association engaged the steeple. 
Are you dying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm inhaling coffee. Jay sorry. is dead. Sorry, guys. Go I ahead. know some of you liked him. I don't, <laughs> I don't wow. know. Who, I don't know who those people there are. Might be and the chat room erupts into applause. <laughs> There's got to be one. Right, in there. right. Just one though. One person who likes Jay. <laughs> we um, all know who that is. Uh, but no, the the chat room's pretty silent. Um, uh, no, we, <laughs> no, we well, don't. haven't heard it yet. Yeah, <laughs> on a delay. There's a second delay that you have to take into consideration. No, no, no. We don't have to take that in consideration. Nah. Just no one likes Jay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so the American Humanist Association engaged the Stiefel Free Thought Foundation in a new study based on their hypothesis that if Americans knew the history of the pledge, that they, it would, they would feel differently about removing under God. Uh, and this new poll, uh, you know, they explained all the history and uh, the new numbers showed that 34% of Americans then said up from 8% that yes, they would uh, support going back to the original pledge that omitted under God. Thoughts on that? It makes sense. I have a unique perspective on this. I'm sure uh, you do, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is, this is because I took the poll. I am part of not that 34%, but the other percent that says keep it in. Oh, shut the hell up. Wow. The reason I'm part of that is because the fucking page skipped when I clicked. And it, <laughs> it made me click on the wrong goddamn button. <laughs> I was so pissed. I tried to go back and re-vote, and I couldn't. Oh. I don't think that. Wait, you actually voted no, for something? I don't. I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> screw well, technically you, Terrapin. Screw you. But he really didn't. If the page skips, yeah, he's still virgin. <laughs> <laughs> is, that like, is that like a Millie Vanilli reference or something? I don't know. A voting person. So I don't think that was it because I think they, they actually did. I think that was a separate poll from from this. But anyway, um, the other interesting numbers out of that poll were that 21 percent of Christians. Supported removing it, which surprised the hell out of me. Yeah, that's doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> Honestly, well, it doesn't make any sense. There's, um, I, I could be mistaken, but I thought the first poll was over the phone, so you actually had yeah. to answer the questions. Right. Somebody, the second one was through the internet, so could the an anonymity? Because they anonymity, anonymity. <laughs> absolutely, they could absolutely have a have huge, because those Christians won't be embarrassed, you know, like in front of their friends, being like, yeah. "Oh no, it's fine. We should totally include everybody in the world." Absolutely. Instead of well, and talking to someone, you know, uh, via voice is going. I mean. Data collection ma methods matter. They yeah. absolutely do. And the anonymity factor is a big one. It also, I think, matters that Lifeway Research, um, I don't know exactly what the call sounded like, but their tagline is biblical, biblical solutions for life. Right. Whereas the, the later group that did it, the Cedowitz group, I don't know. Stiefel Free Thought Foundation is who did it. Oh, I wrote it as, uh, maybe it was the group that, that funded it or something like that. But it was, uh, their tagline was using science using the science of human memory and motivation to help brands build deeper relationships with customers. Yeah. Okay, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's what I found. The phone call probably got a bunch of hang-ups. Like, who are this? Nope. Yeah, probably Although, so. I think it's really, it, what really stood out to me, though, and I wasn't all that um, happy about it, is that you, know, you looked at what you know, the, the Bible beaters, what they wanted the results to be, and their thing is life way. And that's like, you know, Jesus, I am sure. the life and the way whatever. Uh, and then the, the humanists come along and they say, you know, oh, we're going to do this default free thought foundation. It's like, Jesus Christ, people, uh -huh. can we just have like, can, can, can everyone just say, let's not engage groups with pre-existing bias. Yeah. A bias. Right. I mean, oh, geez, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm actually pulling up the Stiefel free thought foundation <clears throat> to see what they say. Oh, well, she, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. So they're saying, you know, Todd Stiefel lives in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's a secular humanist, an atheist, and full-time free thought activist. He's an activist. Right. Todd currently is focusing on chairing the Openly Secular campaign, which is a really cool campaign. Um, I get emails from them. Look it up. But, I mean, oh, oh, I know that guy. Who? Yeah. Todd Stiefel, he's the co-host of the Humanist Hour podcast. That's a good podcast, Name actually. <laughs> Look at him. I He's know, right? I know, no, that guy? I don't know him. <laughs> you know I, of I him. I know of him. Oh. I know who he is. He has dreams about him at night. Right. <laughs> the inappropriate kind. He's no Andrew Seidel. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just go on record saying Sorry. that. Sorry. He, no? He's not quite the 10 of 10. He's like an 8. <laughs> <laughs> Would still bang him. No. <laughs> All right, so just to round out some of these numbers, 43% um, of people of non-Christian faith, so more than the average, said that they would support um, uh, removing under God. 62% of the nuns said get rid of it. 
and over 90% of atheists, except for Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay just fucked that right. all up. It's not my fault. He lost his one friend in the chat room. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sad face. So in conjunction with these findings, though, the American Humanist Association has also launched an awareness campaign because they're like, you know, if knowing the facts increases the number of people who are like, we want to be inclusive. We want to not exclude atheists and nuns and polytheists uh, from public life. Uh, so they're doing YouTube ads and bus ad campaigns in New York City and uh, uh, Washington, D.C. And I pulled the audio from their super short um, YouTube campaign, and I thought we would listen to that real quick. Thank you. We're going to spread the news. The Pledge of Allegiance? Those two. Ever wonder why we say under God during the Pledge of Allegiance? Those two words weren't added until 1954. Atheists, agnostics, and humanists are good Americans too. Under God discriminates against them. Let's sit out the pledge until it is restored to include everyone. All right. When does that run? It's running right now. Really? We haven't heard outrage from this yet? Not yet. It, uh, how, how new is it? It's brand new. I mean, it okay, just happened this week. That's can why we, we haven't okay. heard outrage can, yet. Can we, can we start? Can we like maybe run that down here? Uh, it would be nice if we It'd could, but awesome. you know, yeah, we'll see. But um, mm. so I, one thing because I probably of all of us, I'll bet you I run into maybe PD. I don't know. I don't know what. You, I don't know how many work functions you go to <laughs> with, with with your husband. But <laughs> um, I probably end up in rooms where people are reciting the Pledge of Allegiance probably more than anybody. But how do I mean? You said you don't. You don't say it. No, I don't. No, do, you, no. do you stand up for it? Do you do the hand over the heart thing? I refuse to do the hand over the heart thing. It's just dumb. But um, <laughs> I, I cannot tell you the last time I was in a situation where I was expected to. I'm trying to think of the last time I don't. But for many years, it, it throughout high school, once I realized what it was, it was I wasn't. No, I didn't. This, this summer we went to a convention with one of the union things that we're a part of. Yeah. And so we did stand for it. I did have, have my hand over my heart and I didn't say the line. I skipped the line because it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of the original one, so that's what I did. How about, how about you? Uh, when was the last time you heard the pledge recited publicly? I honestly have no idea. Wow. But, I mean, I, I know for a fact the last time I did it I just stood there. Same as Jay, I, did, I didn't put my hand over my heart. I didn't say anything. Well, I know in high school, I was just a dick, and I would You're sit down. You're still I a dick. I wouldn't stand up. I know that. I mean, I don't know the last time I might have stood up. I don't know. So I hear it a lot. The last time was last week at a, at a school, or maybe two weeks ago, at a school function for my daughter, and um, they did it. Now, I, I was already standing when they did it, so, I mean, it wasn't like a thing where everyone stood up. Well, some people stood up. I didn't have a chair. So, so I continued to stand. I didn't. I, I actually don't say any of the words, and not any of them. I don't just skip under God. I don't say any of them because mm -hmm. I just I find it repulsive anyway. It's propaganda. Yeah, yeah. It's indoctrination. I might be swayed if they remove the under God thing, but I'm like, mm -hmm. this is this whole thing is not about me. Mm -mm. None of it. Nope. Um, uh, I like living here. I like I like this country. Um, I think it is far more patriotic to criticize any organization than... We agree on a thing? Uh, <laughs> one <Ooh>. thing. <laughs> far more patriotic to, to um, point out when your, your country is wrong than it is to say, yay, America. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I was thinking about it today, though, while I was, I was reading this article... Because, I, because it's South Texas, and even worse than I work in Kingsville... I run into the Pledge of Allegiance a lot because it's very deep south, whatever. So do you, you make a show of, you know, standing up normally? I do stand up when mm -hmm. I'm at work because I feel like I'm representing my employer sure. at that point. And if I'm sitting down, I'm not just making a, it's being disrespectful. a statement for myself. I, I still don't do the hand over the heart. I still don't say it, but I stand because I'm, because I don't, sure. I don't want to bring that on my employer. Do you take your hat off? I don't wear hats. Okay. Look at that hair. I know, right? <laughs> How can you mess up that hair with a hat? Come on. I'm not sure what that's supposed to fucking mean, but okay. Anyway. 
Okay, cool. So yeah. Kiefer in the chat room says that uh, the president of the AHA gave her the heads up on this whole thing at the beginning of the summer. So she's like a humanist hipster. Wow. <laughs> in before. Right. Um, I don't know right. if I used that properly or not. I've just heard it. It makes sense. I've there. never heard it, but it made <laughs> right. sense to me. <laughs> so like, cool, Jay. Turpin, Woo. Turpin, can you, did I use that properly? No. Awesome. Well, how, are you <laughs> supposed to, how are you supposed to use that? Just out of um, curiosity. Whenever somebody makes a post in a forum referencing something that typically has, or about something that typically has a reference that is associated with it, somebody says in before, da, 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 in before people start making that reference. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thanks for educating me on the meme this is, and <laughs> this forumness is and child of the internet. What can I say? This has been a white girl moment on the <laughs> stairwaves. Hey, I didn't say I can't even, okay? I did not. Not yet. I did invoke the, the, the white girl and Susan the other day, and I said I can't even to something. I know I say it all the time now, and <laughs> I, I was blame you. I blame you. It was at karaoke. That's what it was. I even yelled at you, and you weren't listening, so I threw ice at you and hit somebody else anyway. Yeah, uh, you... Let's m- let's yeah, we're, just, we're, we're, just, <laughs> <laughs> we're just evolving. Here. We're just all sorts of. All right, what are we talking about now? Let me get back to you. Susan doesn't even fucking know. No, I know. Okay, <laughs> if you've consistently listened to our show for a little while, um, you remember us talking about. Hey, don't do that. No, I haven't. I haven't listened to our show. Well, you've been on the show, <laughs> so you've technically listened. So if you lift, if you've listened to us for a little while. You'll remember us talking about the representative for the Center of Inquiry, Josephine McIntosh, how she was calling out Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. and they were trying to, you know, silence her, saying, silence that woman. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I do remember that now. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the the man that was the whole reason that she was saying all that stuff, uh, his name is Rafe Bada- Badawi. Badawi. Badawi, there we go. You had to correct be, me the first time, I too. I think it might be Raif, though. Raif. Raif know. Badawi. There we go. Um, he was the founder of the, the Saudi Liberal Network and encourages like free and open discussion about religion and politics and stuff. And, well, they really, really hate that. So originally he had been um, been sentenced to 10 years and 1,000 lashes. 10 Wasn't years it 7 and 600 originally? That was the original. That was the original. Well, then when it, like, they they And then he appealed it. (laughs) Well, he he put his appeal in, and he got the appeal back, and... No, he won the appeal. They overturned it. and And then it went to the criminal court, and the criminal court said, no, he is guilty, and that seven years, 600 lashes thing... That's, That's way too easy. Yeah, now it's 10 <laughs> years and 1,000 so, lashes to start within the next few weeks. Right, so if you're an atheist in Saudi Arabia, do not appeal anything. <laughs> Worst idea right? ever. This is the most ironic story of all time. So we have an atheist blogger who's convicted of insulting Islam mm-hmm. by calling it authoritarian and guilty of human rights violations. And Islam responds by punishing him through authoritarian human rights violations. I, I don't even think these people listen to themselves. Oh, no. Of course not. Why would they? Well, and what's they even... Have, they have no benefit. What makes me really, really sad about this is that <clears throat> his lashes are going to happen in public. Like, it's going to be... Um, I wouldn't even give a fuck about that. After the first two, you're, you're probably not thinking like, about ah. the people watching. What are they lashing him with, I wonder? Uh, it's going to be a cane, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, wow. I don't know. I I'm mean, not... I've never been lashed, so I wouldn't know. Jay I don't know, but... has. I don't, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he did have that rope. You can't lash someone with a rope. You get it I'm small sure you enough, you can. You can you flog them with a rope. Oh, oh whatever. Uh, okay. I was just wondering, like, maybe... Because didn't Jesus get, like... Yes. Whipped with a thing that had like barbs on the end? Yeah, yes. it's not that bad. Oh, damn. I mean, it's going to it's gonna be... Um, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to yeah. leave scars. Oh, yeah. He's going to bleed, but oh, it's, yeah. it's not like tearing chunks out of him with no. hooks and oh, okay. crap. Because they're not doing all <laughs> thousand of them at once. Oh, really? They, oh, they're no. spreading them out? They're spreading it out. That yeah. kind of sucks. That's they're worse. doing... Because um, like, after like three or four hundred, you would pass out, and then it would be like... You I know. think they were saying like 50 at a 50 time. 50 lashes oh. a session. Yeah. And then like a week oh, later... No. Man. Yeah, within, well, within the week, they're going to do it. Hopefully the dude's a masochist. They'll send him into subspace, and he'll just be euphoric. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I so can't. they're going to draw it out as much as possible uh-huh. just to teach him a lesson, just to bully him, essentially. Well, yeah, and that's the whole public thing, just to drag him out there and to try to show everybody yeah. else, you want to speak up? You want to stand up for yourself and people? Make an example of him, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. So 10 years in prison, 1,000 lashes, 50 at a time. Oh, my God. Uh, 10 years travel and media ban. So no internet for him. He's not going to be listening to our show anytime soon. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's really, really. Oh, man. So can we travel there and watch this happen? 
Yeah, probably. Cool. I wouldn't. If you're an atheist, you're I would not. Own. I would not <laughs> recommend traveling to anywhere <laughs> in the Middle East. There are many places where you will be put to death just for going there. If your plane gets diverted, you are. But you have a tattoo, Jay. Don't go. I don't know what it means. <laughs> the three of us have tattoos. Oh, don't go, Jay. It don't could just go. mean that I'm an asshole. They might like assholes. Wait, whoa. 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 <laughs> you do not want to continue that sentence. Whoa. It's, it's been a long With day. With the uh, explosives, <laughs> they're going to make you their uh, anal jihad boy. So earlier uh, in the week, you had been mentioning, Jay, that... Um, with the 13th anniversary of 9-11 coming up this Thursday, mm. that uh, there's been a lot of Islam and Muslim bashing on social media. Tons of it. Tons. Um, and since we're talking mm. about a guy who's being punished for insulting me, uh, Islam, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about what we feel is okay to say about Muslims and Islam and uh, what might be too far in terms of insulting them. What bothers you and what doesn't bother you? Making overarching generalizations about any one group of people mm -hmm. pisses me off. And that includes Muslims, Christians, anything like that. If you're attributing um, something to a religion based on what one person did who was not necessarily connected with any sort of uh, any sort of group or whatever, I think that's uncalled for. If you're making criticisms based on fact, based on uh, actual associations, provable associations, Okay, maybe there's room for it. But one of the things that I saw was um, somebody had posted something about this this thing that happened in Britain earlier in the week. Somebody was beheaded um, yeah. in, in their garden or something yeah. like that. And someone I know uh, started, you know, posted this thing about it. And taking a page from Christian's book, I, uh, I, I went and I started researching it. I actually do know how to do that. I just choose not to unless, <laughs> unless I'm being just a dick. Don't. <laughs> so, and I went and I found it's from one of these alarmist, you know, yeah. just overly dramatic, uh, sensationalist websites that has no sourcing whatsoever, went nowhere. And I basically said, hey, look, you don't know anything about this. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know if any of the information in this story is factual or if this dude just made it up right. and put it on his website. Right. Quit doing that. I mean, until you have some sort of... And then another person chimed in and said, oh, I have an anonymous source and blah, 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 blah. It's within the country. And I'm sorry, that's bullshit. You cannot attribute something that one crazy dude who's brown did to a whole religion. You can't do that until there's facts to connect the two. I think doing that is out of the question. It's not acceptable. Sorry, you looked like you were going to say something. <laughs> no, Susan, I'm right? just, I'm, I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, the other thing that I see atheists doing a lot. So I, I, I have nothing but contempt for Islam. I think it's as ridiculous as any other religion. It's stupid and silly and no one should buy that garbage. Um, and I know a lot of, so there are people who criticize Islam and then and they uh, say things and then they get upset because people say that's racist and they're like, Islam's not a race. And it's like, well, you were just talking about racial characteristics in, mm. in relation to it. So yes, while you can be a white Muslim, you can be an Asian Muslim, you can be an Arab Muslim. Can you be a Jewish Muslim? You can be a, no. Well, yes. I think you can. You can, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's like <laughs> so much self-hating going on there. I mean, I don't even know what you would do, but yes, you can. And um, so while I agree with those people who say that Islam is not a race, um, like my favorite thing is, you know, I had someone who freaked out because I was like, dude, what you just posted was kind of racist. He's like, Islam's not a race. He's like, yeah, but you're talking about turbans and he took his brown thing in the ca taxi cab. I'm like, that's, that's racist. Hold on, you took his brown thing in the taxi cab? Yes. What the hell is that referencing? There's, there's a joke. I'll post it in the okay. Atheist Airways Facebook page. I'll post, I'll post it with a big disclaimer. This is not my thing. But, okay. I, but I'll post it so you understand what I'm Your talking about. Your thing isn't brown. Got it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I get past the taint and I go straight to the... Sorry, that's... <laughs> that Pre-show joke. Sorry, people. If you weren't... This is why you show up to the show early because you get to hear about all the disgusting things we talk about. Anyway, right. go ahead. I'm sorry for continually derailing Any, you. Anyone else have thoughts about that? No. I, I, the only thing I have to say is that I agree. I, yeah. yeah. I, I just feel, I, the other thing that I guess bothers me is 
uh, really clueless religious people who are like, you know, or even not even Islam. Let's even broaden it to Scientology or Mormons. Yeah. If you're a Christian, if you're, let's say you're a Catholic and you're like, how stupid is Scientology? A, you're correct. But B, do you see where you're standing, motherfucker? I mean, <laughs> right. yeah. Which is, I put something on like that on social media this morning. I was saying, hey, look, if you're going to criticize one group, stop and take a look at your own group first. Right. <laughs> because you believe in some crazy stuff. Yeah. And I realize it doesn't seem crazy because you're like neck deep in, in your crazy. You're indoctrinated. Right, right. So, you know, while you're pointing to the guy who's standing in the other crazy vat, you're mm. standing in your own crazy vat. So, I... And especially when we live in a country which is 80% Christian, and so it's mostly Christians versus the world. Like, we hate Hindus, and we think Scientologists are funny, and frickin' Muslims kill them all. Um, I have a problem with that, because uh, I'm one of the people that they want to kill, <laughs> you know? So I have a problem with that. They just think that they're so violent, that they just remember that now, because that's what's happening today, but they forget that that's where their religion started and made sure that, hey, you're going to do this too. You're going to follow us. Mm -hmm. And there was so much violence involved that they just pretend like that mm -hmm. didn't happen. The, the, that is still the case today. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Oklahoma City bombing was, uh, you know, uh, an argument can, argument can be made that that was in part a religious thing. Abortion doctors being killed yeah. by Christians. Uh, abortion clinics being bombed by Christians. Um, the, uh, the arson of mosques. Christianity is every bit as violent in this country as any other religion. They choose to ignore it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or or justify it. So, um, I don't know that anyone did this, but I figured since, you know, in... Um, in solidarity with our atheist brother who's being uh, lashed for, uh, <laughs> who's being la who's being lashed for insulting Islam. I thought, uh, everyone give me your best insult of Islam. Your baby was a goat. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, no? no, no, you're not listening. I got a website that I actually pulled up. Is there anything good in there? Um, I read it. But it looked called... like a GeoCities website when I clicked yeah. the yeah, link. Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> it does. That's what's that's what's a little sad. Um, call Allah a pig or swine. That's supposed Ooh, that's to be good. super yeah. offensive. Uh, call I... Allah a pimp to pedophiles. A pimp Ooh. to pedophiles. Because pimp to pedophiles. Like oh, a band yeah, name. no, no, because like Muhammad was like uh, Aisha. Is that what it is or what? I believe so. Yeah, his nine-year-old. Married her when he was sick, mm. when she was sick. He flowered when she was nine. Nine, nine. yeah. yeah. Pimp to pedophiles. Pretty good. I, I, think, I think that's a good band name, though. Pimp to pedophiles. You could say, oh, I, demonic pagan swine goddess Allah. What? Say that again. You can, you can just say to sort of sum everything up that's because it says... Uh, Call Allah a pagan, call Allah a demonic, call him a pig, call him a goddess, a pimp pedophiles. So you could say demonic pagan swine goddess Allah. That's okay. supposed to be Holla. super offensive. I don't know, I don't know how this works. I, th I think one of those, <laughs> like just using one of those would probably be effective enough to not merit the whole thing. I thought it was really bad to call their family goats. I don't know, maybe. I don't know goats? anything about it. They're not no. quite the no, same thing. No, no, they don't. I don't think they have Lots the same. Your father was a goat. That was not a bad thing. <laughs> no, I think, that, I, I, I think the swine is the worst. I think that's like a sitcom yeah. thing. Your but, father was a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Come again. <laughs> so I thought a lot about you know an appropriate insult to Islam that wouldn't be offensive, and the first thing that I came up with was Islam. You are the AT and T of religion. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like. No one's that shitty. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I just, I, I'm sorry. Be <laughs> so then I was thinking, okay, and this is, this is kind of a little offensive. I thought, you know, okay, Islam is the Ford Pinto of uh, religions. The gremlin. It explodes when you hit it. Right there, buddy. That's the best thing ever. <laughs> I feel bad for that one. <laughs> just, no, so, you don't. When we're talking about things that are not okay, <laughs> that, oh. that might be one. <laughs> Fucking stealing that, dude. That's great. You're like, I, I feel bad, but I'm going to sit here laughing my head off about yes. it. Horribly. So it's all about context, man. <laughs> in no way does Atheist Airways <laughs> promote the idea that all Muslims blow themselves up. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good oh, job, dear. Christian. That's a show title there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too long, but okay. Let, let's, <laughs> uh, you never know. I don't even let's, know what's next. <laughs> let's just move on. It's my, sh- it's my thing, and I'm ready, you guys. <laughs> All right, go mm-hmm. for it. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> what was that you were saying about being ready? I said I was ready. I didn't think I, I didn't say I was done laughing. Oh, <laughs> I, do, I, I do. I, w- I want to back up really quick because uh, Kiefer six 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 in the chat room had a really great thing about uh, Raif ba- Badawi. She was suggesting that he's being um, lashed with a noodly appendage. So I'm just like, <laughs> that's not so that, bad. He's a martyr, man. Yeah. He's a martyr for the movement. Okay, moving on. Malachi Wilson is a, if you keep laughing, I'm going to, I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm good. done for now. Malachi Wilson is a five-year-old right here in Texas. Uh, he was sent home from school on his very first day of kindergarten from FJ Young <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, FJ Young. I'm, <laughs> 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 I, oh, I just, what? <laughs> I, it, uh, that I've I've been reading about this uh, for a few days, and it being. just that just occurred to me right now because I'm an awful human being. Yes, okay. you are. So FJ Young <laughs> Elementary uh, School, because his long hair violated the school's uh, dress code, which reads that quote: "Boys' hair shall be cut neatly and often enough to ensure good grooming." Malachi is also a member of the Navajo Nation, and it is against his religion to cut his hair. There is so much weird stuff going on with this. I almost don't know where to begin, but um, maybe first let me say that there's nothing wrong with his hair. If you There are pictures of it online. You can go see it. It's in a ponytail. It's braided. It looks neat. It's not crazy. It's not ratty. It's not dirty. Um, I Just from a, stere- a gender stereotype perspective even putting aside the religion thing i think this dress code is wrong yeah it shouldn't matter it really shouldn't yeah. <clears throat> and it i thought i had it in my show sheet but i don't i actually pulled the the uh the whole dress code for the entire oh did you really yeah and i, I oh, but it's it, but it's tons more messed up in a lot of places well i i, I mean it really it's not that bad oh okay um it, it's it's not i'm trying to find it now um i don't know what the hell i did with it though you give me a second, I'll find it again. Okay. Keep talking about things. Okay. I'll keep talking, you keep looking. <clears throat> so uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting is that at least the small portion of the dress code that I saw doesn't actually forbid long hair. Because it just says you have to get it cut frequently. It does. So for all they know, it? he's just <clears throat> trimming off the ends of the hair and keeping it neat. Because like you said, it was perfectly neat hair. Yeah. You know, it looked a hell of a lot nicer than mine. Yeah. But why does it look nicer than yours? Because because look at her, she's a mess. You got party for her. Shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I went to a private Catholic high school and grade school, and we had dress codes all the way through. In fact, we had uniforms in grade school, uh, but I had long hair, and it was never an issue. No, I've never had any problem. I've had long hair since I was twelve, thirteen, something like that. Never been an issue. The only time I've ever run into anything is I was trying to get a job once, and they told me I had to cut my. I've had hair. that. I've, oh, really? Facial hair? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that stuff that's taken you so long to grow, hey, man. Hey, hey, I can't be white and bearded like all the other guys, okay? <laughs> all right, so the, uh, the, the male dress code portion as it relates to the hair. <clears throat> boys shall be, excuse me, boys' hair shall be cut neatly and often enough to ensure good grow. <laughs> I think it's good grooming. Hair shall be above the eyebrows and may not extend below the top of the collar of a t-shirt and when combed over the ear may cover it's cut off damn it see what i really wonder is why do they only have that standard for the boys right. and not for the girls why are they feeling a need to force this stere- dis- gender stereotype right on them that's just it's inhibiting a kid's freedom of expression it does it goes on to say uh, no rat tails mohawks and or ponytails are permitted designs and lines boys haircuts are prohibited sideburns may not Extend below the ear, and may fa- male facial hair is prohibited. The thing about the... Wait, read the, the lines thing again? Designs or lines in boys' haircuts are Ooh. prohibited. That's, that's racist, That's man. racist. It really is. <laughs> yeah. really racist. <laughs> Only brown and darker brown people do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So basically, this whole entire school district is just a big freaking mess. I, and I won't... Um, that, that doesn't appear, at least here in the South, to be unusual because I, I won't use the name. I'm sure it's probably okay, but I won't just in case. 
but there's a member of Corpus Christi Atheists who works for a school district who has the same things. It's very, very specific um, to black people. Like, clearly these things only apply to black people. And it's just strange to me. And it uh, in researching a lot of these stories today, over the last few days, actually, uh, this seems to be a trend, and I don't know who's driving it, but when you see things happening in multiple places, in multiple states, in multiple school districts, there is someone pushing these things. Someone is asking them to do it. They're you know, pushing for it. I don't know who it is, but I think this is something that they're, that they're doing on purpose. It's Obama. Yeah, thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> ruins everything. Um, <clears throat> I, and I just, as an aside... Um, I, I think that the reason they don't have a similar rule for girls in these dress codes is because everyone assumes that uh, women should have long hair uh, and would desire it. And, and they probably assume that every woman is going to have, you know, they wash their hair every day, like take really good care of themselves, sort of grooming habits. And smell nice. Yeah. And, and be nice. really soft. <laughs> and dreamy. <laughs> just like, quit turning mm. me on. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, one of the things that, like, one of the things that really, really just makes my head explode, because even, like, people that I would not expect to do this, do this. It's Could you the make toast. the ice? <laughs> Can you just make the fucking ice? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, Why do you get to talk to your appliances like that? It's not my Fuck fucking wife. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Fuck. That's being edited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but this insistence that women never cut their hair. And what I hear from women is, oh, I'd really like to have short hair, but my husband won't let me. Or when Turpin was going to cut her hair short, a bunch of women in there, no, don't do it. Like somehow it's their business or somehow what my hair looks like. Right. But I mean, it's this weird cultural stereotype bullshit thing that everyone does. I, I was going to, I was going to bring up a similar topic in the, you know, the dress code as it relates to females and having ultra short hair. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I, I've never seen anything like that. I wonder if any of them are out there. I, I have, doubt it. But then no. you brought that up and I, I actually received it. I've I, been threatened. My life has been threatened. If I ever cut my hair by several females, <laughs> What yeah. the fuck? Well, that's what they're into. So, you know. <laughs> I had Females that have, that have nothing to do with me in oh, any shape or form. I don't know. I had, I had short hair when I was in, like, like super short hair uh, when I was a junior in high school because I cut it because I was in a production of Rocky Horror. And nobody said anything to me. Everything was fine. I don't know if it's because we didn't really have a very strict dress code when I was in I high school. I don't think they, they enforce that. I think they would view you as crazy uh, to be well, a woman with short hair. I'm from a small town in South Texas, and the long hair on guys was a big deal, and I wouldn't even doubt it. I don't remember now. It's been a little bit since I've been out of high school that short hair on a female would totally be like, what's wrong with you? Like, why is your hair so short? I the, other, the other thing is that you can very easily fix long hair. You can't do that with short hair. So, I mean, you can't, like, send someone home and say, <laughs> grow your hair back. <laughs> you can't come back. So, I Wings mean, Wings get expensive, okay. Maybe a little bit of logic creeps into their decision-making on that front. Perhaps. What I really want to see a school district do, though, because they, this uh, dress code talks about the hair has to be above the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. I want to see them uh, enforce that all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> everybody gets bowl cuts. Bowl cuts for everybody. You get a bowl cut. <laughs> you get a bowl cut. <laughs> uh, Y'all are fucking weird. Uh, okay, so. Oh, come on. That was fucking weird. Malachi is back at school now. I mean, he went back to school a few times. He tried to put his hair up so that it was above his collar. Really? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like a one-time thing. No, no, no. Huh. Um, uh, but first, his mom had to prove, provide evidence to the school that... Um, he was an He Indian. was Navajo, which mm -hmm. says to me, it's like, okay, that's racist too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't Super. look it enough. Right. They had to... Oh. Right, and... Um, well, I'm just saying it's like, what if I converted to Navajo? Like, I'm not yeah. an actual Navajo, but I decide I want to believe in that stupid religion. Um, and I'm not saying it's stupid because it's Navajo. I'm saying it's stupid because it's a religion. Mm -hmm. um, 
I should have that constitutional right, right? I mean, freedom of religion is freedom of religion. And and in no way does having long hair on a boy, especially like in a nice, neat ponytail, does that create a problem at school? Mm -hmm. I don't understand these dress codes anyway. It's BS, man. So there's another one that I'll just mention brief. Well, I don't know how briefly. But in Louisiana, next door to us, in Crazy Town, Louisiana, um, a Rastafari student from South Plaque Mines High, uh, which is weird, um, uh, was suspended from school for 10 days for having dreadlocks, which he also says that his religion requires of him. Um, it's not re- universal among Rastafari, um, but... Uh, uh, they do. Many of them do claim that it's biblically necessary. Rastafarian. Yes. They yes. They is that don't a, biblically. Yes. Uh, I didn't realize that was a that was a re- Christian thing. Going by the going by the Old Testament, it, it says like thou shall not cut your hair and shave your beard and okay. stuff like that. Right. I, I so thought, I thought it's the same. It's the same thing with the Jew, the mm-hmm. Jews do. So here's the thing: because I I did not know anything about Rastafarians until I started looking it up uh, in the last few days. Um, it's not so. I'm I'm gonna confess and just say, you know, when I hear the word Rastafarian, I think dreadlocks and smoking weed. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it is it, is it like required That's to not use Visine? <laughs> <laughs> but I so wow. I it's like so your holy water. I, I am ash- <laughs> I am ashamed that I have, I'm ashamed I'm ashamed that I've made it this far into my life holding this stereotype and having no idea what Rastafarians uh, are like. So. I want to give everyone the 30-second version of Rastafari. Please, the Rastafari we, I didn't Ethiopian. realize it was an actual religion. Okay. It's an Ethiopian Hebrew religion um, uh, that uh, it, sometimes they like to call it a religion. Others like to call it a way of life. So some reject that it's a religion. Anyway, uh, it arose to popularity in the Americas in the 1930s and was super popular in Jamaica, which is where I think the weed thing came into uh, <laughs> Uh, to promote another stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> that must be baked. Right. Uh, so adherents worship Hale Selassie, the first emperor... No, Haile Selassie the first emperor of Ethiopia who ruled Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974, and some of them consider that he was the second coming of Jesus. Wow. Did anyone know high. that they were this crazy? <laughs> <laughs> right, they were all... They were all, all high. <laughs> But here's this is what made me this is what made me think though, and really messed me up, is that if you think about Jesus and let's assume that this uh, Ethiopian guy was the second uh, Jesus, the Messiah coming was super boring both times. <laughs> I mean, no one if it wasn't for like the people with the swords with the little lowercase t's, no one would have noticed Jesus or this Haley guy. Yeah, but have you ever he seen didn't the do mes- anything? But have you ever seen the Messiah? On we, <laughs> <laughs> it's a trip, man. <laughs> but I, that had never really occurred to me that Jesus really didn't do anything. I mean, he did some cool magic tricks, and like just assuming that the the the, the you know miracles were true, and clearly I mean, they're not. But it, it, like he did some cool magic tricks, and maybe it was cool with the chicks or the dudes or whatever he liked. But I mean, he had absolute. <laughs> I mean, he went around. It's like talking. David Blaine. David Blaine killed yes. Jesus. <laughs> he kind of looks like him a little bit too. <laughs> Wait, is that because he's brown? It's because he has a goatee. <laughs> okay. Jesus you, are a goatee? A <laughs> you are a goateeist. You are a goateeist, man. Hey, anyway. I'm like the resident facial hair enthusiast. Okay. Okay. So that's true. Let's talk about dress codes for just a second. They are horrible. <laughs> Can, uh, because I spent a lot of time today trying to think of what are good reasons to have a dress code, and I can only think of one. Can anyone else think of good reasons to have a dress code in public schools in this country? I've got one. Good reasons to have a dress code. Not really. Cricket, cricket. No. Give, me, give me yours, and maybe it'll right. spur something in my brain. Okay, so the only thing <clears throat> I came up with, because originally I was like, because the other thing that really annoys me is I really hate, especially on local news media uh, websites, when people go crazy about how slutty girls are in today's mm-hmm. world. I just don't even, I don't even like hearing people no, talk up. about that. Um, the thing that I finally came up with was there is such a thing as appropriate attire. You know, True. that you don't, it, how you dress culturally matters. <clears throat> um, so, if you are going to a wedding or a funeral, you're not going in 
shorts the and t-shirt. slutty B costume. Right. Okay. Exactly. If you're going to record Atheist Airwaves, shorts or t-shirts, cool, naked, cool. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, hold Thanks on. for telling me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck it. Let's just do it. <laughs> but then, then if you are having an Atheist Airwaves show and Matt Dillahunty's in the room... You, you wear, wear some clothes. You wear your pink bow tie. I mean, <laughs> these are this is a, this is like a skill that children need to learn, and I mean, just to be culturally assimilated, and that's a good place to learn it. So, appropriate attire is your reason. Yeah, I, I did come up with one. Okay, gang affiliations that can cause a problem. <laughs> okay, mm. you know, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that could cause that potential could cause fights, deaths within, fights, deaths. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I think that. Qualifies under appropriate attire. I think gang attire wouldn't exactly be appropriate. Well, I well, mean, no, if you're just wearing colors. Yeah, if you're just wearing uh, like a red bandana or something. I mean, because the high school I went to, th- that was a problem. So yeah. I can see where that could be appropriate. They, but they would still find a way, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way. I mean, they, so, they know, but. So it's like, yeah. It's true. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Nothing so, else, guys? B- backing up, Kiefer666 says you can't uh, convert to Navajo, but I think I can say that I buy into their religion. I'm not saying that I'm, I, bec- I can become uh, a member of their race. I'm saying that I can believe in their religion. Just wanted to clear that up. By the way, I'm going to brag a little bit. I get to see Kiefer next week. Shut yes. up. Why? I'm going to Baltimore. Oh. Well, you, deserve, you deserve Baltimore. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you too, Kiefer, for not being around here more. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Moving on. So now to Catholic schools. So Catholic school teacher Paul Blake, who's recently fired from his job for uh, doing something that the Catholic Church apparently deems really, really horrifying. And he's a public public school teacher, just to make that clear. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the private Catholic. It was, right, it's a public school. Yeah, Canada is um, super weird, and I'll talk about that in a second. But go ahead. <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah, Canada is weird. <laughs> um, yeah, he he told the truth. Because he informed a group of his grade 12 students of uh, their right to be exempted from any explicitly religious content within their educations. So he told the students about a family in Brampton, which is near Toronto. Uh, They had won a court case that was declaring that the parents could keep their kids from the stuff like the religious retreats and the liturgies and the ceremonies and stuff like that. So it allows the kids to have the freedom to choose, you know, what sort of religious things they want to participate in. But apparently, the president of the Ontario Catholic School Trustees Association, Kathy Burtnick, she really didn't like it. Uh, She says that her group, the Ontario Catholic School Trustees Association, has received legal advice that Catholic students are not eligible for an exemption. She says, it's not a menu. If you come to a Catholic school, you have to expect the Catholic faith as the basis of your entire education. And they have actually uh, denied. denied exemptions for these people. And it's so... So this is why Canada is so weird. And I had no idea until I read this story. And even in this story, they don't really talk about it. <clears throat> uh, I had to do my own research because I'd never heard of this. Different provinces in Canada handle it differently, but in Ontario, they have their regular public school district, and then they have the Catholic school district. Both are 100% funded through taxes and public money. Hmm. Uh, Crazy town. So people have sued over this and brought it to their Supreme Court, and their Supreme... So here's the other thing you may not know about Canada. Catholicism is like freaking cemented into their constitution. So rather than the secular document we have... They have a very Catholic document. Really? That's, so, yeah, that's yeah crazy. right? It just made Canada a like, lot what? less appealing. I know. Like, I was totally going to move there. Now I'm like, totally not. <laughs> I got enough problems. Um, but I had no idea about this, this stuff. makes me sad. Right? Yeah. So um, the Supreme Court in Canada ruled that it's totally constitutional because Catholicism is in our constitution. Um hmm. But the United Nations Human Rights Committee has ruled that Ontario's system in particular is discriminatory because there are no publicly funded Jews, Jewish schools, there are no publicly funded Muslim schools, uh, any other denomination of Christianity. Uh, and they, the UN says, you know, Ontario either needs to fund no faith-based schools or all of them because right now it's just Catholics and everyone hmm. else can go... Fuck themselves. And of course, the Catholics would be all up in arms about it. 
Oh, nifty. well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Just like, like they've done here in America. They've well, and like what we were talking about last week about how they're losing all their money in Germany. It's like mm-hmm. no one wants to give up their cash cow. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I just, so, you know, I was thinking about it. I, I actually sent my daughter to a religious school for kindergarten. Really? Um, because I was living in a place where the public school really sucked. If I had it to do over again, if I had known what I was getting myself into, I totally wouldn't have done it because it was super creepy. Um, she's, she's so easygoing that I think it, it worked out okay for her, but, um, uh, I can see myself in Canada looking at schools and saying, you know, the Catholic schools are better academically. I'm going to go get myself an exemption. But if the Catholics aren't giving those exemptions anymore, and this is, you know, settled law up there, I would be pitching a fit. Mm -hmm. That is some crazy town right there. Yeah, very much so. I didn't realize that that was the case in Canada. Right? Hmm. Who knew Canada was this crazy? (laughs) Canada seemed so reasonable and polite. (laughs) They're a bunch of crazy douchebags. They Bastards. apologize and say I, A after everything. I apologize to our Canadian listeners. I but don't. I, fuck you. <laughs> Especially you, Derek, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, so just a quick reminder. If you want to call in and talk to us, Atheist Airwaves, all one word. Uh, you, you, know what, you know what? You know would be awesome if you turn Skype on. If I turned it on, you <laughs> dumbass. If you've tried I, to call in, please we, try apologies. again. Oh my! But my daughter tried to call in. Aww. <laughs> Shots. So while Christian is <laughs> unscrewing himself, um, <laughs> let me remind you that we meet every Sunday at five thirty. This weekend is a B and J's weekend. Is that correct? Has that been updated? Surf club weekend. Surf, it's a surf club. club weekend. That's mm. what I thought. Yeah, because hey. nobody, uh, practically nobody, went to meet up. This yeah, last everyone, weekend, everyone Rudy was at a five-year-old's <laughs> birthday party, but it was so much more awesome. Whose birthday party? Amani, mm-hmm. Courtney's oh. daughter. Why would you go see a child? Because her because kid rules. rules. Was it? Was and it, it was free. Was it the pinata? <laughs> no. Oh. Damn. All right. Anyway, so her we're gonna be rules. we're gonna be at Surf Club uh, Sunday this this Sunday at five thirty. Uh, visit ccatheist.com to find out where we're going to be and all of our public events outside of meetups uh, as well. If you're interested in connecting with our affiliates, SouthTexasCOR.com. Awesome. Sauce. So do we have a discussion thingy or do we already We do already that? did that. Man. Okay, we kind of we jumped around. <clears throat> Let's talk about one of the grand Ayatoya. I Ayatola? think that's Ayatola. Ayatola, Ayatoya. Hey, it's, it's not, it's it's not the Spanish. It's the brown guy in me, okay? It's, it's I, not Spanish. You're not going I want him to be part chicken, yeah, yeah. all right? Anyway. Let's talk about one of the Grand Ayatollahs. <laughs> Don't laugh at me for that, pucker. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's time for the Fatwa of the Week. Unfortunately, this Yay! one doesn't come from us, Aww. but uh, it does come from I'm, one of... I'm willing to adopt it, and I'll talk to you about that in a second, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, so one of the Grand Ayatollahs has uh, deemed against moral standards and non-Sharia-like. Can you want to take a guess? Uh, high-speed internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Specifically, 3G. 3G, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just wait That's... till they get those 4G towers. They'll have another one. <laughs> that friggin' 3G, man. That, then the screaming will really start. <laughs> you don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I guess they can't allow their herd to be educated and see things outside of what they want them to. Yeah, I do like this, this fatwa, though, because I work in Kingsville, Texas, which is in the middle of... Uh, I'm sorry, Pete, because oh, Peter no. Petey lives there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just work there, <laughs> and then I get the fuck out. Um, uh, but all we get is 3G, and um, it sucks so bad. <laughs> give me LTE or give me death, because that shit in Kingsville is awful. What kind of death do you want? Uh, I will take any. Anal not, jihad. Not. <laughs> Anal jihad. <laughs> okay, let me retract my statement. <laughs> Hey, no, too late, I have, man. No, no, too I have late. preferences. I have preferences. <laughs> no, Chainsaw? No takey backsies. <laughs> exactly. No takey backsies. <laughs> I, I take, uh, oh, God, what was that thing? I'm going to edit all this out. What was that thing that Euclid posted about the... Uh, Star Wars being racist? No, no, no. It was a while <laughs> ago with uh, the cartoon the Futurama Death by... What was that? The, the, like, the death booth? Thing? No, oh snoo? no! Yes, death snoo, by snoo snoo. Death by snoo snoo. Death by snoo, snoo. <laughs> I, ch- I choose death by snoo snoo. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, go look it up because the it's spirit hilarious. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is spongy and weak. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, 
<laughs> this has devolved so I know, bad. It's so back on track. Nobody's um, going to know about it later. I, I have to question the efficacy of these countries who are trying to limit internet access because I... I mean, I know it must make a difference because if you just look at, like, atheism, you can link it pretty closely to the rise of atheism to the rise of the internet and things right. like that. So, I mean, obviously, access to inf information, whatever. But how hard could it possibly be to get around this stupid net nanny Iranian bullshit? I don't know. I've never gone there. I haven't yeah. either. I was under the assumption <clears throat> that everybody had to have, like, the same... ISP and they could control everything. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Wasn't there like a huge blow up with Twitter recently? Yeah. Because it, and it was something that they were oh, doing in Egypt or... Like a specific... I, yeah, I it was in a specific to, country. Twitter was getting through. But he was tweeting about it so everybody started retweeting it and so that and that's what got attention. Yeah. Twitter. So it's like, what? Well, that's that what happened during the Arab Spring. Spring when that first kicked off is mm -hmm. that was a big thing is Twitter was, you know, the, the way they were communicating. It was the only means they had. But well, that, and they that's do. what I'm saying. If you want information... Even if even if your Ayatollah has net nanny enabled on Ayatoya. your Ayatoya, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're gonna you can find information. You cannot lock down that information that well. I mean, plus you have people over in the West who are sending information via email and other things. And I mean, yes, they're risking their lives, but whatever. Chat room, we have some fairly techie people there. I'm sure. If any of you have some more information on this, I'd actually yeah. be really curious to know how that works. If you can get around it, if you if they do actually lock them down to the point where they can't. Jacob Gossip Five in the uh, chat room uh, recommends motorboat death, and I could go for that too. Snoo snoo, motorboat death. I, whatever. <laughs> These I don't want to be good suffocated to by tits. That sounds I, horrible. If you gotta go, I mean, it, dying is gonna be sucky. I mean, so just pick a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs on my anyway. face aren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> um, but here's what I recommend to. Uh, the Iranians is what they all they need because they're building their own internet. I don't know if you read that or not. They are building their own flipping internet. And basically, what this fatwa says is no 3G until we finish our own internet where you won't get this stuff. But they're going to do it wrong because all they're going to have is like stupid crap like AOL that no one's going <laughs> to no one's going to be interested in. An ankle right? porn. It, <laughs> it can be frustrating as fuck. You right. Know, in Kingsville, some days you know we're trying to download stuff, <laughs> or even watching the show some days it's like, what is wrong? What's he going to do yeah. with his penis now? <laughs> oh, like it's frozen. It it's out. loading. <laughs> oh. And then you buffering. get an ad. <laughs> <laughs> A loaded frozen penis. It happens. Jane. Yeah, it, that's the it, latest. <laughs> it's, it's the latest like model of, of it's a fun Kingsville that everybody's thing. all crazy about. Kingsville, you should visit us. Y'all um, weird. So here's the thing. Coming they from should, me. They should <laughs> like actively put weird stuff on their internet. So one, they need cat videos because that's a thing apparently. Because so people love them. People love yes. cat videos. Do they have cats there? Is that Who like cares? That's what'll make it even more novelty. Right? Dude, cats? Like, what? Is? What the hell is a cat? Shark, there's, there's shark I, cat and actually, keyboard cat. I'm pretty the sure. Roomba cat. So many cats. Oh my god! I'm so glad. I'm so sorry I brought this up. <laughs> <laughs> you have crazy so, cat lady in here so right two, now. Come on. So number two is dating sites. You need dating sites because you people love that stuff. I, I like. Okay. I haven't. I, I like I'm dating so sites. It. Dating sites post-date my dating, so I have no idea. Okay, hold on. How can you have a dating site in a heavily Muslim area where they're all wearing beekeeper this suits? Is, this is what I'm... Well, because, you know... It's all in the eyes, You Jane. like... Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you just have that sassy way of wearing your burqa. But I, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, so, I do I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see, that, you see that woman, she's looking at you, and she's got that little sassy thing going on with the burqa, right? Okay. so <laughs> she, she gives you, like, the sex eyes, or what? So that's, right, right. So, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> number three. So you get... Oh, shit. <laughs> cat videos, dating sites. Number three, and you gotta... You, Ayatollah, you gotta go with me on this one. Porn. Lots Dude, of porn. Yeah. And all you got to do is say that all the porn you get on, I don't know whether there's like a, like if Muslims have like the Aruv thing, like where you, like, like maybe they can wear hula hoops and it's okay to touch yourself <laughs> while watching this porn while you're wearing your magic hula hoop. But For if, those of you who don't listen to every show, <laughs> he's referencing, I think it was four shows ago where the, I think it was the Jews, wasn't it? Yeah, Jews. Yeah, Jews That's, in Florida are stringing. 
strain things up having, to get around their religious rules. So yeah. here's the thing. It's like you set up like this a roof thing where you are allowed to just like, you know, defile yourself on all of this porn that's on this Muslim site. And then they can have, just to keep the guilt cycle going, they can have like pop-ups every once in a while. Like, Muhammad saw you do that. So <laughs> get, get your ass to a mosque right fucking now. Perfect. And this will... Uh, rather than making people go out and look for things that they really want, you give them things that they will enjoy, and then they won't look for other things. Now, all I, all I can think of in my head is glittery Muslim men in hula hoops <laughs> fucking each other in the ass. That's the only image I have in my oh, head now. I was going to say, in like, in like Daisy Dukes and roller skates, kind of like Archer, never mind. You don't watch Archer. <laughs> I do, too. I don't remember that the episode. episode. The episode where he goes undercover is uh, to seduce... The honeypot. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I do remember that. That was a good reference. I wish I had gotten it. It would have been funnier. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the second time that it's been like... I don't, I don't okay, shut up. It. We're going to move on. Don't worry. You have so much editing to do. I know, right? This is like a total nightmare. Um, Let's talk about the Irish. uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, we only got about 20 minutes left. Okay, let's talk about the Irish. Um, This is a short one. In Galway, Ireland, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, which sounds like a super party group, um, (laughs) uh, they are a Christian volunteer organization. They gave a 45,000 pound grant to a local LGBT group to create a community center, which is fantastic. Good for them. But then the evil Catholic Archbishop, uh, Martin Drennan, which sounds like an evil Archbishop name. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, he was quite distressed by the entire situation um, because he's afraid he's going to harm the city's poor. And how is he going to do that? Because reasons. Because <laughs> stuff. Because of reasons. Because... The gay reasons. Yeah. Has Jeebus told him? No, just because the gay reasons. <laughs> just <laughs> the gay reasons. <laughs> but this guy What's your reasoning? Even... The gay reasons. The gay. I'm gonna what, start using what, that. What I really, what I really like is that his reasons totally ignore that uh, the LGBT in Ireland are most heavily the poor. <laughs> so he's saying that creating a community center for the group that is most heavily impoverished in their country is bad for them. Well, I can see his logic. If if the majority of the LGBT community is poor, clearly that's correlation, must be causation. Therefore, if you have a support network, there's going to be more of them and more poor people. But a lot more sex, which would be like awesome. Which and makes more poor people. But it won't be the reproductive sex. But and that's what's all important. Muslim TV, everybody's winning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like around. <laughs> Get, Muhammad watched you watch that. Get to the mosque. Does um, this, but I thought I saw something that said this guy doesn't even really have control no, over this is the where great, this money goes. This is the greatest thing. So a spokesman for the St. Vincent, while well, this guy is all screaming all over the place, this is horrible. And he says, you know, that homosexual activity is... Uh, in our eyes, morally wrong behavior, and we cannot put funds at the service of what we don't believe is morally correct. I don't know why he's so stuffy and not Irish. But, um, <laughs> it sounded like James Mason a little Yeah, bit. I don't know. Uh, a spokesman for the St. Vincent de Paul Society noted that the Catholic Church does not fund, nor do they oversee their group, so they can bite him. And I'm loosely paraphrasing his <laughs> comments here. Um, the money was given by somebody that like bequeathed it in, yeah. their, in their will, so it's yeah. not... They well, have no control over yeah. it. Well, they don't anyway, because they, the Catholic Church has no control over this Christian exactly. group, even though they're Catholics. It's not run by the Church, mm-hmm. although they clearly wish that it was. It's a group of Catholics, um, but not a Catholic group. Right. So this, this same... Um, spokesman for the St. Vincent de Paul Society also said that the decision to help the LGBT group was made purely on the basis of need in the Galway area in the same way as all requests for support are assessed so Archbishop Drennan can bite him. That's Loosely what, paraphrased. That's what he's, no, that's totally what he said. <laughs> I believe it. Supposedly. 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 Reportedly. One more quick. You want to move on to Harvard? Move on to another quick one. Okay. So in a very, very non-scientific survey, unlike the survey that Jay managed to mess up. I don't know how unscientific this is. It was only, I mean, it was only incoming freshmen and only the ones that chose to participate. But it was 70% of the incoming freshmen. And anytime you get 70% of a group, that's totally reliable data. Well, I can... 
It's mostly reliable <laughs> mostly data. Mostly reliable. It's allegedly reliable data. Yeah. It's good data. Supposedly. If you get 70% of any group, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's that is like good data. So Supposedly. this data only applies to the incoming freshman class of Harvard, but it's reliable. Yeah. So in the somewhat scientific survey <laughs> conducted by the Harvard newspaper, The Crimson, um, there's a very, very interesting religious breakdown. Now, like you said, that over 70% of the incoming freshmen uh, had responded, and 35.6% actually had checked the atheist or agnostic boxes. And that was uh, just under the percentage that checked the Catholic or Protestant boxes, and that was at 37%. Right. And huh. that's 1.7% higher than the atheists and agnostics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. And if you put all of the non-Christian religions together, that it comes up Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, that's like 17.7%. So there are twice as many atheists as any of those other groups, which is... Refreshing. Awesome. That's yeah. good stuff. I We're mean, taking over. Right? Well, at least Harvard. The, in, the, the end <laughs> times must be near. It just kind of proves how education actually can change somebody's exactly. opinion to where it's like when you broaden your horizons and you don't well, just listen. These are freshmen, though, so they haven't actually been to Harvard. They're the incoming class. And well, at the same time. But, but the, yeah, the, they're actually pursuing something else right. instead of just sticking to the norm. And at the same time, there are probably a lot of them that only claimed religion because their parents didn't. It's what they did is their tradition and everything. They might be going into college going, oh, I'm so glad I'm out of there now. I don't have to go to church anymore. You know, kids who've been questioning relief, stuff like sure. that. It was, you know, probably some knee-jerk reaction just to put that on a survey. Yeah, well, and, you know, this is Harvard. So, you know, um, education and intelligence are correlated with non-belief. So they got that going for them. And... <clears throat> Non-belief is negatively correlated with poverty. So most of, not all, but most of the students that are going to Harvard obviously are not poor. Not poor. Mm -hmm. So they have a whole bunch of atheist correlations working for them. So I, I don't know that you can make a wider, and especially because you don't, we don't have past information on, on this. This is a, a snapshot of this year at Harvard, mm -hmm. but it's still so super encouraging that yeah. we are moving in the right direction. I wonder what their secular student alliance is like there. Oh my God, that must be amazing. That must be <laughs> like the most Although, intelligent, either, they're either really intelligent discussions or they just like run around yelling. I've, swords. I've met their secular humanist chaplain and he's really? a nice, a, a wonderful fellow who does a lot of good work, but they pay for a secular humanist chaplain at this school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's a proper chap. <laughs> Still name dropping the whole show. Quitting this show. <laughs> you know, you this guy I have met. I don't just know of him. I have met. Him. Um, okay, so let's talk let's about talk what about we're doing. Really quick events. Oh, uh, so next week we're going to actually be recording on Monday, which is September fifteenth. Not Tuesday. Not Tuesday. Monday. That's Monday correct. next week, Jay. Show up on Monday. Guys, Guys remind me of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, that's going to be our author, or our interview with the author of Disproving Christianity, David G. McAfee. We are also going to be meeting up for the Dollar Day and Grand opening of the Corpus Christi Museum of Science and History's Imagination <clears throat> Playground. It's going to be on September 13th. With 13th. Which really? Is God damn it. Teach. That's like so this teach. weekend, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's also there's also a gorilla gardening event um, this Sunday, Sunday morning. Um, you can check I that event church. out on Facebook. Do you have to wear a gorilla suit? Yes. I'll, I'll be in it's Maryland encouraged. enjoying the weather. It's an encouraged. And, and Sarah Keeper. <laughs> And also on Saturday, September 20th in the morning, we are doing a volunteer day at the food bank as well to help them get stuff sorted out. And to help them get over their little atheist problem. What is an yeah, imagination yeah. playground? Wait till you see. No, seriously. What is it? <laughs> that just sounded is like it, Is it dirty. for children or is it yes. supposed to? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's oh, a playground to, for children to play on when they go to the Museum of Science and History. Do they have a baby punching booth? Yes. We're really? gonna be we're gonna be really? building it. Are you coming? Did you see the twinkle in his eye? Are you gonna eye? come? <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited. Finally. It's great. It comes with like little baby shackles. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You'll enjoy Are we drawing and quartering shackles. babies too? <laughs> 
That's yeah, amazing. Of course. So right. do remember next Monday, not next Tuesday, next Monday, Monday. David McAfee. Woo-hoo. We have 15 minutes, guys. All right. Let's talk about Indiana. We haven't talked about Indiana in a long time. It's true. We haven't. So this is messed up. Uh, so there's a Christian sculpture at Whitewater Memorial State Park in Liberty, Indiana, which is obviously government land. Um, the first thing everyone needs to know about this sculpture is that it's awful. It looks like Jay did it. <laughs> well, when I saw it, I was like, really sure awful. What, I'm not even sure. What, i got to look it up Well, now. when I saw it, I was like, what is it? Oh, oh, okay. That, that's it what is. it is. It is. It Wait, scroll down a little bit. Scroll down a little bit. To figure out what it was. Yeah, it's what awful. The? I know, right? Yeah. It's awful. It's the worst. This is so great radio. Beyond the, right, right. So go, uh, I'll post a picture of it in the Atheist Airwaves Facebook page. So look us up on uh, Atheist Airwaves on Facebook. Um, uh, I'll tweet it too. So Atheist Airwaves on Twitter. Is that supposed to be a kid? No, wait, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is terrible, no, right? No, wait, there's okay. more. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, Barring the fact that there's this giant cross on the thing and it's a Christian sculpture on government land. <laughs> I love the, yeah. the face you're making right now. So um, it should oh, not... I see it. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it does okay. look like I did it. Okay. So, my... <laughs> <laughs> so proud. Okay. So, I mean, it shouldn't be allowed in a government park because it's just so awful. It's that bad. Get thee to Facebook after the show and I will show you this damn thing. Okay, so there's a cross. So there's an eagle on top, and whose wings are like way too fucking long. I don't even know what's going on with this eagle, but that does not seem practical for flight. No, it just doesn't. there's no. This eagle is not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> there's a cross, which is really, literally, the only thing in this sculpture that isn't messed up. And who can't make a freaking X? So um, uh, kneeling in front of. <laughs> Oh my God! Kneeling in front of this cross is a soldier. It's a Gomer pile <laughs> slash. How, how, his, how long do you think that thigh bone is? Right, that is so his, dog. his legs are way too long. Um, he doesn't have a neck. No, and it looks like he's wearing half of a coconut on his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's the boy cut bowl cut. Right? It's, it's the dress code. It's the U.S. Army dress code. So anyway, the FFRF. Andrew Seidel probably did it because he's my hero. Uh, Sent off a letter to local officials saying, hey guys, kind of illegal, sort of have a constitution. You should remove that before we sue you. Just posted the link in uh, Atheist Airways Facebook. Okay, thank you. Go get there right now, chat room. Um, uh, Of course, that made news. And this is the other great thing about this because Atheist Airwaves, uh, Atheist Airwaves, (laughs) Atheists Everywhere, uh, hurt the artist's feelings with their comments about the, <laughs> the thing. And I, Y'all gotta be nice, guys. So Come on. The artist's name is Dale artist Lewis. Art. And he is quoted as saying in local news, quote, they were talking that it was like hideous. The worst sculpture they ever seen. The soldier looked like a farm boy with overalls and a bad haircut. They were really ripping it. It's like, dude, that's exactly what it looks like. It's awful. So when I tell you this is the worst statue ever, go to Facebook. It's the worst statue ever. What is the inscription? I have no idea. I couldn't All read it. All games serve know. Christ? Is that what that says? Also, it looks like there's a tumorous vagina coming out of the eagle's chest. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it does. Look at that. <laughs> there's an angel? A tumorous vagina. Coming out of the eagle's chest. Oh, Look eagle's at. chest. Okay, hold on. I'm pulling it back up. Oh my God! What is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's giving birth to an alien. It's like a sideways tumorous vagina. I don't know. I was gonna make a joke, but you would just edit it out. So yeah, I would. <laughs> but the chat room could enjoy it. Never. No, I'm not even gonna do it. Uh, yes, guys. No. So anyway, this him. is this is just awful. Um, anyway, so now that we're done poking fun <laughs> right. at this. Um, this horrible so statue. This week, the Department of Natural Resources accepted the statue to be displayed in the park permanently. And the governor issued a statement in support. So please prepare your barf bags now. I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> the governor said, quote, I fully support the decision by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources to accept the sculpture commissioned by local citizens. <sighs> I would not be bragging about that. Uh, To honor all who have fallen in service to our country, the freedom of religion does not require freedom from religion. The Constitution, yeah, I told you, get the bag ready. 
The constitutions of our state and nation more than allow the placement of this Hoosier artist sculpture on public <laughs> lands. This is like a bad episode of Parks and Rec. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so long as I am governor, I will defend the right of Hoosiers to display the sculpture in Whitewater Memorial State Park as a lasting <laughs> tribute to the service and sacrifice of all who have worn the uniform of the United States. I was wondering if Jay was going to have the same reaction I did. Oh, well, but no. because, <laughs> because in, sure. Mis- in Missouri, Hoosier means something totally Totally different totally than it different. means anywhere else in the United Completely. States. What is it? It's great. <laughs> it's great. Okay, my, for those so of us who have not, it's been tough to Missouri. describe. No, uh, no basically like, it means redneck. Kind of like redneck. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and actually, I know the history behind why that happened. But li- like, literally, this is Carolyn's favorite thing. She will use that word in conversation, but she's like, "It's so great because no one knows that I'm trash talking them." They're, they just re- talk. like, "You're a freaking Hoosier," and they're like, "I'm not from Indiana." It's like, okay. <laughs> now that I know if I am ever in her presence and she calls me a Hoosier I'm going to be all like god dang it what the hell <laughs> yeah. you know it's strange I didn't realize until you said that I have never heard that in the state Yeah, nor Arkansas. Arkansas you have now it, it's only in Missouri and here's the reason actually it's mostly in St. Louis here's the reason here's a history lesson that you, no one listening to this cares about <laughs> McDonnell Douglas used they you got taken over by Boeing but they wow. used to be a big employer in in St. Louis and they were running out of people they closed a plant in Indiana and all the Indiana people came to St. Wow. Louis and everyone fucking hated all of the people okay. who moved to St. Louis from Indiana and because they were Hoosiers we're like okay all the fucking redneck white trash people who are coming to our state those are Hoosiers I get it now That's that makes why. perfect sense it yeah. was like a good frame it. of reference to have than if you didn't fully understand it before. That's good yeah. stuff. I like yeah. it. I just love that. I was like, I was sitting here wondering, I was like, is Jay going to laugh <laughs> when, I t- when I get to the Hoosier part? Yes. My, uh, my St. Louis homie. Slut. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I already got one of the slut high fives right, today. Well, I'm, so. I'm you get slut. You get one too. Okay. So a veteran from the area was also asked what he thought about the decision by local news. And I love what he said. He said, quote, well, I, and by love, I mean, uh, get your ba- barf bags set back out. <laughs> he said, quote, I had, I had an inkling that they might accept it. I respect that people believe differently, but they shouldn't try to force things down our throats. It's given this community a fucking... Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got angry. I got angry. I'm going to dial it down. No, I'm not. Okay. Darn. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> this is what I was talking about last week with my family. It's like, they're going to disrespect me and then tell me I need to be respectful of their beliefs that I'm an uh, I'm a godless fuck. Um, this guy is going to put up a goddamn cross in a fucking public park and tell me that I'm shoving things down his throat. Well, you, Are you fucking serious? You could shove something down his throat. I knew you were going to make a dirty <laughs> joke right there. And edit it. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. going to let that go. I'm no, gonna... that's fine. Okay, so I would like to see it burn, personally. It looks very flammable. It burnable, it's burnable art. <laughs> it's burnable art. Okay. Burners now, without borders can help that one. <laughs> Go and steal it in the middle of the night. No, no, I have a better idea. Let us pull on the ranks of 4chan. I bet they can get a petition that will have not, enough votes. Or Reddit, <laughs> or both. Let's not Either have, one, yeah. Let's not have anything to do with 4chan. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that will only backfire. So oh, no, it won't? Do not talk hey, to them. Hitler don't, did nothing wrong. Don't even... <laughs> <laughs> did you get that? Nobody got that reference? No. Wait, I oh, didn't hear what you said. I said Hitler did nothing wrong. Surely you of all people know what that is. She knows what it is. I, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> don't even give 4chan direct eye contact. Just like, you know, don't it's do like it. It's like a crazy guy on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it'll be cool if you're just cool. <laughs> <laughs> At least cool. it's not the chive. Yeah, that's true. What are we talking about on post show? Anyone have any ideas? Uh, I have an idea of, of a thing to play with. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to need gonna another go drink. That was going to go unnoticed. <laughs> Until I snurked. Oh, God. <laughs> I had an idea of a game we can play. Oh, no. I don't, I don't want to play this game. Stop making it any better. No, I don't want to play this game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's actually been relevant okay, a couple leave it, times. Okay, leave, leave it there. If you would like to know what, J, what game Jay wants to play so that we play with his thing or whatever, <laughs> Atheist Airwaves, uh, patreon.com slash Atheist Airwaves, 
one dollar, <laughs> and you can and you can see what fucked up thing he is gonna make us do, and we're all gonna do it. All of us. We're in. What? Well, I'm we're changing in. the game now. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hit, let's hit one more before we head to post. What are we hitting? Let's hit Stephen Hawking. That guy can't hit you back. Oh, <laughs> oh snap! Damn. <laughs> Damn. You're back. Damn. You're back. I, 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 I like become Jay for an episode. How did that even just come fucking come out of my mouth? What is this? <laughs> this is fucking awesome. This is horrible. <laughs> this is the funniest <laughs> show. <laughs> oh my god! Please just start talking. Soon. So, in totally soothing news this week, <laughs> Stephen Hawking, the theoretical <laughs> physicist and author of A Brief History of Time. With a brutal right hook. <laughs> I can just hear his pure computer voice moaning in pain. <laughs> uh, it, you, oh, you. okay, just stop. <laughs> just talk about the story. Talk about the story. We have to stop. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start awful. completely over. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so in totally soothing news this week, Stephen Hawking, who's the <laughs> theoretical physicist and author of A Brief History of Time, we decided to let everyone know that the ominously named God particle actually has the potential to kill us all. Insert the dun dun Tell dun, us how dun, it dun dun dun. So um, the Higgs boson discovered in 2012. Uh, apparently, it has the potential to collapse space and time by creating a catastrophic vacuum delay if it were to be put under extreme stress. But luckily. We don't currently possess a particle accelerator that will put enough stress on it. I loved Stephen Hawking's quote on that because he said, a particle accelerator that reaches 100 whatever yeah. gig- gigawatts whatever <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> would be larger than Earth and is unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. <laughs> what I really love was when he said, this could happen at any time and we wouldn't see it coming. Thanks, Stephen Hawking. I that makes appreciate me, no, it. That's a good way to go. Yeah, I mean, like something like, that kills, that collapses it. space and exactly. time at the speed of light. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's an okay way to die. Yeah. Cancer, not so much. Uh, Higgs boson vacuum collapse? Ah. And how large an area does this affect? Total. Yeah, everything. The universe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All like of the space entirety and time. of the universe? The uni- yeah, okay, the all universe. of the wibbly wobbly timey wimey. It affects the whole thing. <laughs> oh, what do you, who did you boo boo boo? Oh, man. <laughs> what? Get thee to a Doctor Who. Uh, Seriously. No, You're the absolutely. second person this week that I've been all like, come on, Doctor Who. Ah, come on, bro. You and your come British on, crap. So here's the, here's the thing that worries me about this, though like even theorizing this is that if you go back to like the Manhattan project and developing the nuclear, uh, the atomic bomb, there were, uh, scientists who were theorizing that detonating a new, uh, an atomic device would set the entire atmosphere on fire. Fine. There were other people who theorized that it would set off a chain reaction that would just keep going and destroy everything. And they did it anyway. They did it anyway. Um, Cool. I think that let's do it. The fa- that's what I'm afraid of. It's we like there's going to be some some douchebag Jay in a lab coat somewhere. <laughs> He's going to be like, "Fuck it, let's just do this, let's mother. Just do this, let's man. Cycle her up, man. Drunk what science. Are you afraid of? <laughs> if it works, you won't know it. <laughs> Nobody will know it. So this is what I was thinking about today, though. I think that the fact that it hasn't happened yet, that we're all still sitting here suggest that it might be impossible to destroy the universe because there's some alien J somewhere <laughs> who has p- pressed that button like 500 times. It's like, why is this working? All my math is correct, and we're not destroyed. Jay's math is never mm. correct. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is true. Uh, it could also just suggest that we, we are the most technologically advanced culture that is out there. So, you know, until we do it, the universe is safe. And if we can do it, you know we're we're freaking going to because oh, yeah. we're mm-hmm. we're horrible people. Because there's people like me out there. Um, or we're just far enough away from the assholes who have already done it. <laughs> then we have <laughs> it hasn't affected us just yet. It's it's, it's going it's to it's moving at the speed of light. Soon. We won't see it coming. It's just any moment now. Flap in the air, atheist airwaves, <laughs> vacuum collapse. Yeah, okay. None okay. None <laughs> uh, anyway. So, thanks, anyway. Thank you, Stephen Hawking. 
Thanks, for bunches. giving for telling me seriously i think this is the way the universe ends is some douchebag pressing a button and saying <laughs> and saying let's see what happens it's it's more with a not with a bang but with a whimper yeah <laughs> sort well, of but what, that like but seriously how screwed up is that that you can just like accelerate a particle in a really big super collider and destroy everything well they've got to accelerate it and then smash together it's, it's like right. intergalactic nascar <laughs> or Formula One, well, all depending. Don't, you don't even get to enjoy the crash. I mean, <laughs> the crash happens. You're, you're dead before you. The, I mean, you're dead at the same time you realize that the crash has happened. So you're like the driver. Oh. It's, like, it's like the fly on the windshield. It's like, oh. yeah. what is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last thing that goes through a flies, flies mind before it hits a windshield? It's ass. Mm hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> but that would be after it hits the windshield. I mean, it wouldn't. Well, the okay, after it, thank you for shackled. splitting little fly hairs. The, the ass would tiny little spontaneously. Fly hairs. You never know. All right, there's a lot of editing. You want to do one more story? No. <laughs> no. He's like, I just want to get to freaking post show. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to Atheist Airwaves. We're sponsored by Corpus Christi Atheist and the South Texas Coalition of Reason. If you would like to compliment or complain or suggest or whatever, God at atheistairwaves.com, I suggest that you suggest that Christian get us off Ustream. And thanks I to like Ustream. If you disagree, go to the Atheist Airwaves Facebook page and let us know. But I like Ustream. Uh, it's much better. Like, I'm li so, okay. Sorry, Mark Nebo. I'm listening to the damn ramen podcast. The quality is such shit. It's such shit on, on Google Hangouts. Google's a shit company. Can I just say that? Google is a shit company. Outside of <laughs> search, thing just shut off. they are a shit company. <laughs> Someone fucking Skype into Atheist Airwaves in the post show and argue with me. Somebody send him hate mail. Got yes. at atheistairwaves.com. Thank you, Tombstone the Dead Man, for our outro music. Look for him on Facebook. Love that dude. I've been listening to him all week. All of his stuff is good. Go find it on Spotify. It's awesome. Patreon.com slash Atheist Airwaves. Bye. See you guys. skeptic means so much more than being an atheist and until you accept that you won't relate to this that cognitive dissonance that you experience is when there's things you claim to believe in but ain't living it most of you say you are the type to question everything until i hear the conspiracy theories that you echoing and when i scrutinize the things you try to say are lies exposure sources and suspect i see your logic dies some still believe in pseudosciences engage in special pleading when theists use the exact same reasoning i've even seen atheists use arguments from ignorance and see my press the Tell me exactly just what the difference is. A skeptic without the ability to analyze is just as bad as the theist because he'll probably accept the lie. Just as long as it verifies all his biases, applying it to his knowledge pool, and then he's diving in. So I'm not saying that some conspiracies do not exist. I'm just saying that a lot of them are some bullshit. So I'm gonna call a spade a spade no matter who asserts it. Nobody's perfect and just one lie, then it's all perverted. Bring down the curtains on that sad display that only ways to question yourself and all the things you say start the day. And maybe we can rise up up and be examples for others to emulate and that's the way we win this battle so this is where i'm making my stand and now regardless who don't like it or how they get mad so while the rest of y'all capitulate and go with the plan i'll be beating on this wall until i'm breaking my hand so listen while I state official policy No matter how I'm threatened with hell That never silence me I know that you don't see this as imperative But I refuse to lose and let the stupid frame the narrative This is Audrey, who says, my husband and I are in our 80s and have been tithing for many years. We both love the Lord and give willingly, and our tithe is over 10%. I praise him and thank him for our blessings. I declare that this is our time of prosperity. You, you were, were already snotty. You were mostly like, ah, oh, mm, ah, during most of the show anyway. <laughs> sneeze and ease, fucker, shut up. Sneeze and ease. Oh, balls. Welcome to Post Show, where Jay is going to sneeze the entire fucking time. And cool. I'm going to try not to insult uh, disabled people. <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit, it was hysterical. 
Poor Stephen Hawking. It made me laugh. I don't know that it was hysterical. It but made you it laugh made hysterically. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but only because of how horrible it was. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's funny. Oh, you don't on. actually want to do it. Hold on, hold on. I got to stop the recording and start it again. You.